the rules for competing with other men are pretty clear. Mm -hmm. The rules for competing with women are not clear at all. Yes. Because if you're a loser, you're still a loser. But if you're a winner, you're just so easily a bully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it isn't obvious what, what, how men can negotiate that. Well, they have to negotiate it through negotiation. That's the only possible outcome. But it definitely makes things much, much more complex. And it's, it's also, it's complex, at least in part, because as you just pointed out, within the sexes, the competition is about different things. So, or be, sorry, between the sexes. No, no, within the sexes, the competition is about different things. So when a woman competes with a status, with, st with a man for status, she's competing for male status, not female status. And so what to make of that? Well, why that would be rewarding to her isn't that obvious. And I think that's part of the reason why so many women bail out of high pressure situations, jobs, when they hit their 30s. I mean, part of it is that they would rather be with their family and, and uh, for obvious reasons. But the, the, uh, the other unspoken elephant in the room is always, well, why would it be particularly rewarding for a woman to attain status in the masculine hierarchy? What, what benefit does that confer on her? Well, more income, that's one of them. But that confers no attractiveness advantage, whereas for men, it, it accrues a tremendous attractiveness advantage. It's definitely disproportionate male versus female. I would say, though, that if, two, if a woman is, if a man has a choice between two women and they're both equally attractive and their personalities are pretty much the same, et cetera, and one is more successful than the other, the man is likely to be more attracted to the more successful woman, but he's also likely to be afraid of rejection yeah, right. by that yeah. more successful yes, woman. Yes, definitely, he definitely. He will feel that that more successful woman will have more options. Uh, than, she will have more options. She will have more options. And she'll have higher demands as well, and, because she's going her, to want to make, that's the real issue. Is the, That's where the rejection issue comes in. It's not even necessarily that she has more options. It's that because she's more successful, her criteria for what constitutes acceptable are going to be elevated. They may even be elevated to the point of impossibility for her. Exactly. And, and the real fear that the man has is the fear of being rejected. Yes, definitely. And I, I, I think that, 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 well, I've made light of that uh, by teasing my, my class, my, 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 my students, you know, I said, well, what's the, what's the, old, what's the joke? Well, you're, you're perfectly suitable as a companion, but in no way should your genetic material be allowed to propagate itself into the next generation. Right. That's, that's the core of rejection. And it's no, it's, it's, it cuts to the bone. It cuts to the bone. And I, 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 it isn't obvious that, that, that that's sufficiently understood how terrified men are of female rejection. Well, that's part of the turning to pornography, I would say. And the advantage of dating sites like Tinder, because the rejection is taken out of the game, essentially, or it's hidden, masked. Tinder is a, is a revolutionary technology because it alters the, the reward structure, reward and punishment structure in dating. I mean, it's, a, it's incendiary and named properly. Pornography is basically access to a variety of attractive women without fear of rejection at a price you can afford. And right, when, and with, with, the, with the commensurate responsibility. None, yeah, exactly, exactly. except to yourself, right? But that's easily foregone in the moment. And the challenge of it is that the more, so boys who are usually doing less, young men who are doing less well in school, who are not the, who, who are not the football players that are getting the you know, 15 different women coming up to them and risking rejection, um, who are not the um, student body presidents, who are not standing out in one way or the other, who are not getting great grades, not part of the honor society, et cetera. Uh, the the non-standout men, the ones that are oftentimes um, dad deprived, uh, that have mi minimal postponed gratification and so on, and they tend to do badly in school or drop out of school, uh, those boys feel like losers and they, they know that women tend to not date losers, they tend to date winners, and, um, and they end up in the um, unemployed and what women are looking for, um, for God, uh, and, and much more likely to be in their families, um, live with their families, 66% um, more likely. Oh, yes, that's another statistic. Young men between 25 and 31 are 66% more likely than young women to be living with their parents. Yes. 
and more and, young men are living with a parent than with a partner. Yes, and they and you don't find women um, looking um, in their uh, you know, looking for men that are living in their parents' basement or looking for men. No, well, that's just a joke, which is why you you know you could insert it there as a cliche. Everyone understands exactly what that means. It means failure to launch. It exactly. means Peter Pan, right? It's, it's a joke, and and. and and those women are therefore more like uh, those guys rather are much more likely to turn to pornography because um, they they sense they're being rejected by women, um, and then they turn to this beautiful woman that they can be turned on by. The challenge with pornography is that the more you get into it, the more you tend to be stimulated by more and more risky things and more and more salacious things, or you know, or things that are. That yeah, are. well, that's because novelty enhances enhances pleasure. So that's the addictive element of it. Precisely. And then the female who is interested in that guy um, and does come over to, you know, to be with him physically, um, she often feels like this guy is like, you know, more interested in something that happened in the pornographic um, things that he's been watching. She feels like an object, um, like, uh, and because she is being treated like an object. Well, and also those are the men who aren't going to be particularly sophisticated in their, their treatment of women, because how can they be? They have no experience precisely and so the the pornography ends up haunting them on multiple levels um and 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 leads them to often turn back to pornography to avoid continuing rejection and only convinces them that a real life woman is somebody uh, that he would uh, fail on one level or another with and so it's a really um and you ever seen robert crumb's representations of bird-headed women no, you, no, I haven't. Robert Crumb's an underground cartoonist, and he was the feature of a documentary, which you should, you and everybody else who's listening to this should definitely watch. Huh? It's it's absolutely it's the best documentary I've ever seen about anything ever. It's and he he draw, draws these women. They're pro, he was a loser in high school by his own admission, by every single category you could possibly generate, and so it's a study in loser psychology. But it's really complex because he was a loser who was extremely intelligent and unbelievably creative and who had two brothers who were probably more intelligent, more creative than him, although also more psychopathological. And then he became successful. He was one of the establishers of, of underground cartooning back in the, in the 1960s and, 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 and spawned arguably even graphic novel. You know, I mean, he's, he's a major player in that, in that niche. And, and, the documentary is a brilliant analysis of the relationship between failure and success and sexual failure and sexual success. Because in one memor memorable scene, he talks about, he drew this card when he was a high school kid of a heart being ripped apart when he got rejected by this girl that, that or by all girls. He said he was beneath contempt. He, could, he wasn't even in the category of comprehensible dating partner, right? He was outside the game entirely. So he's rejected by the feminine as such. He draws these pictures of bird-headed women with teeth, you know, and they're powerful, big thighs, big, big, uh, big rear end, like powerful, physically powerful, intimidating women, like mothers, draws sometimes these characters of little tiny men climbing up the legs of these huge tree-like women, but they're very aggressive and, 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 and uh, domineering, and the reason for that, at least in part, is because every woman he ever approached was rejecting and aggressive in the extreme, treated him with nothing but contempt. And then he says in an unbelievably memorable piece of the documentary, um, that all changed when I got successful. And you can just hear the resentment and the bitterness in his voice, even though it did change, and he wasn't that old when he became successful. He was in his mid-20s. You know, plenty of time to be on the outs completely and to experience life at the bottom of the male dominance hierarchy and, and even farther down the female dominance hierarchy, let's say, in terms of desirable men. It's, a, it's called Crumb, the documentary. I would highly recommend it. And it's, it's absolutely brilliant study. And, and he had, well, he had an authoritarian father and uh, indulgent mother. And she plays uh, a key role in the documentary. And uh, it's, it's awful. It's, it's awful. It's a, it's a, a study in Freudian psychopathology that's deep beyond belief. I've seen it like 40 times showing it to my classes and walking through it clip by clip. But, but anyways, it's a study. You don't see the world from the perspective of 
down and out male loser. You know, there are subcultures that that sort of exist there, but this is the this is the only examination of that place in the world I've ever seen that I thought really, really nailed it. The, the documentarist was a friend of the family, so he... And Charles Brothers, one of them ended up a sexual offender who lived on the streets of San Francisco, and the other committed suicide by drinking furniture polish when he was like 55, after being bullied terribly in high school and living in his mother's basement, essentially, for his entire life. Ugh. Awful. Awful. But, you know, you watch the documentary, it's not... It's not like people really, there's, you, you generate some compassion for the people in the documentary and what they've gone through. But I wouldn't say that compassion is what's primarily elicited by the documentary. And that goes back to this discussion we had right at the beginning about, you know, what kind of empathy we have for the men who aren't making it. And the answer seems to be very, very little. Let's go to social policy with that. We might ask, okay, in light of this, what do we do? And I would say this is what I've recommended. I've recommended to young men that they take, that these are the facts on the ground and they're not going to change. And that if you're being rejected chronically by women or if you're terrified out of your mind about that, and, and perhaps rightly so, you should take a good hard look at yourself and see what it is that you have to offer. And so... Like, are you as educated as you could be? Are you working? You know, are you looking for a job at least? Are you trying to get out of your parents' house? Are you taking the steps necessary to become gainfully employed, productive, generous, and attractive? And, you know, that tangles us back up with something we also talked about in the beginning, which is the criticisms that have been directed my way by men, which is, well, you're asking men to live up to a stereotype that essentially... Um, undermines and devalues the vast majority of them. You're part of the problem, not part of the solution. And your emphasis on uh, responsible marriage, given the state of current family law, is nothing short of reprehensible. And so, you know, my approach is do what you can at the individual level to put yourself in the game. But there's there's much more to the story than that. Absolutely. This is really complex because I, the, the good news is there's a lot you can do, do to choose a, a woman who is the right woman. Um, and f so, for example, uh, uh, looking at uh, when when you go both both go out to dinner, um, does she is, is she open to paying? Is she if she if she isn't paying, does she does she cook a dinner for you the next time around? Um, how does she treat the waiter, uh, somebody that can't do her um, any any good? Uh, ask her about her uh, former relationships, um, how they broke, um, how they broke up, and who was at fault? Was is there any accountability and responsibility on her part? Of course, ask these same questions of yourself as well, especially about uh, former relationships and how they broke up, um, and um, and so. That's um, so choosing the right woman is probably. And so what are you looking for there? You're looking for um, generosity. You're looking for kindness down the hierarchy, right? So that's how does she treat people who are social inferiors, so to speak, at least in that context, like waiters. And then with regards to previous relationships, is she capable of some self-analysis or is, is it always the guy's fault? That reminds me of that Atlantic Monthly article, one of them. I'm unfortunately can't remember who wrote it, but it was this woman in her late 40s detailing out all the high quality men that she had rejected many, many, many men by her own um, account. And during the entire article, there wasn't any recognition whatsoever of any time when it might have been her. It was like, I re these 40 men didn't live up to my standards. It's like, well, after the fifth one, didn't you start thinking maybe the problem was on the other side of the dating table? But the answer was obviously no, and she was obviously still single. So 